Vertigo with no nystagmus, as long as you unmask it, is of central cause. We're done. The standing algorithm that I mentioned. Now, the standing algorithm came out in 2014 in a publication, and I've used it for quite a while because it allows me to go in and not think about a history which can sometimes mislead me, but go straight into an examination. And it, the results from this are very good in predicting peripheral from central causes. And if we look at it, the first question they ask is, is there nystagmus? Now, if you've got nystagmus, nystagmus is the fast movement, greater than three or four beats, so it's maintained and it's unilateral. That's usually the benign cause, okay? But if you have nystagmus and it's unilateral, and we're thinking about a peripheral cause of so the ocular motor reflex, the ear opposite to the fast nystagmus is the one that's affected, okay? So when you move, if you're doing a Hintz test and you move the, the head, the head impulse test, you move the head towards the affected ear, that's when you'll get the abnormality. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so if you, if you don't have nystagmus, you stand them. You test their gait, you look at what their truncal ataxia is. If you have vertigo and no nystagmus, it's a central cause until proven otherwise. You've got to go down that road. If you do have nystagmus, if it's positional nystagmus, the Dix Hall Pike and the, the Pagnini is just the lateral movement of the head to look for the, the lateral semicircular canals. Um, and if it's spontaneous, that is, it's not positional, so it's not triggered by positional movement. <coughs> if it's unidirectional, you can do a head impulse test on the patient. And if it's positive, it usually points to vestibular neuronitis. If it's negative, you've got to go down the road of a stroke. Make sense? Yeah? So, if, you fix, so if you've got nystagmus, it decays after three or five fast beats. Or it stops if you fixate. And sometimes...